Ladies and gentlemen, this film is supposed to be part of the Zauber Kiplauf video I have, but for safety reasons, I separated them. So this part of the movie will be about the history of the 11mm Mauser cartridge, which is a very important cartridge in military history and firearms history as well, as this was the very first caliber for a bolt-action rifle manufactured by the Mauser brothers. And second, I will show you how to reform cases from 45-90 to 11mm Mauser cases. These cases were uh, basically manufactured by several companies, for example Bertram Brass or Hornebel. They were available in Europe, but they, nowadays they are very hard to find, so I decided to make my own, as I have the 4590 cartridges for my 1886 Winchester, which is a good basis for reforming it to exactly match the bore of my 11mm Mauser rifle. This cartridge was developed for the first bolt-action rifle of the Mauser brothers, designed for the army trials of 1871. The rifle proved to be superior to any other rifles in competition. The committee only asked for a little modification to the safety system to accept the rifle for service. This was the first German military rifle to fire a self-contained center fire cartridge. The charge was 4.9 grams of black powder and the paper patched 25 gram lead bullet. The diameter of the lead bullet was exactly 11 mm and the patch added another 0.15 mm thickness to the projectile. In 1884, with the acceptance of the 71 pair 84 repeating rifle, a new version of the cartridge was introduced. A flat nose bullet was introduced instead of the original round nose projectile. Unfortunately, I don't have enough 11 mm Mauser cartridges, which means I will have to find some creative solution as they are just very hard to find on the market today, especially in Central Europe. But I have plenty of 4590 cases, which uh, can be reformed to 11mm Mauser. So now I'm going to show you the basic steps of reforming this cartridge case into an 11mm Mauser. There are quite a few differences between the two cartridge cases. First of all, the 4590 is a straight wall cartridge, which means it does not have a shoulder and neck, so I will have to make a shoulder and neck. Second, the size of the hole, the mouth of the cartridge case is also different. This should be 11.15 mm, while it is the 45 caliber, as we usually note on 4570 cartridges and 4590 cartridges. Second, the length is different also, so it must be trimmed. The rim, the diameter of the rim is different, so the 4590 has to be uh, turned down on a left to 15 mm, and also the thickness of the thickness of the rim is different, which means that I'm going to have to be much more clever than just uh, just reforming the, reforming the cartridge case. And now we are going into the creative reloading secrets. So, it is important to know that each and every kind of single shot rifles close on the rim, which means that if the rim is thinner, like the 4590 cartridge case compared to the 11mm Mauser case, it means that the cartridge will be able to move in the chamber up until the first firing, of course, because after then it will be formed as the chamber forms the cartridge. So I will have to be creative here. But why do we care about the cartridge moving in the chamber? Well, the answer is simple. When you're firing the gun, the firing pin will push it forward as much as possible, which means if your rim is, let's say, one millimeter less, then it will move forward one millimeter, but it will also come back when the gas pressures are pushing it back, which is going to hit the face of your breech, which is going to damage your firearms after a few shots. You don't want that. So this is why you have to make sure that the rifle is closing properly on the cartridge. I will have to make this new cartridge, the 4590 reformed cartridge, close on the shoulder of the cartridge case and on the bottom of the cartridge case. This is the same kind of closing as all the repeating firearms has and all the rimless cartridges have. So this is what I will have to do and this is why I will have to measure each and every single step while I'm reforming this cartridge. So let's start it on the left. Now that's step one. Apply a thin layer of free-sizing lube. You don't need too much of lube. Be careful to don't apply too much because it will deform your cartridge case. And now comes the sizing part. The die is set 
for placing the shoulder. And then here we have the case reformed. And now it is time to try the cartridge case. I'm just placing the cartridge case into the chamber and see if the bottom of the cartridge case is in line with the breech of the bore. In this case, there is two, let's say two millimeters. So I will have to move the sizing down much more deeper. So this is my second attempt. I already moved the die down with two millimeters and we'll see if it will be good or not. The case is also relubed, of course because you need plenty of force to reform the mouth of the cartridge. And let's try it again. And here we are, and it seems much, much, much better. You can see that the bottom of the case is just completely in line with the breech, so which means that the shoulder is in good place. So now we are at a much better situation because now we have a cartridge case that is already fitting our chamber, but the length is different. So what we did so far was reforming the rim to the perfect diameter, we were also adding the shoulder to the case. We just shrink the mouth of the cartridge case to 11.15 millimeters, so it will accept well the Moser bullet. And now the last thing we have to do is to trim it to size to exactly 60 millimeters. And now the last part of the job is to use the chamfer tool to clean the mouth of the chamber. And there you go, we have a perfect case there. And now we have a cartridge case that can be fired safely from our firearms. It will close on the shoulder and the bottom of the cartridge, so which means that I'm going to fire it as a, as, a, as a rimless cartridge, but who cares, because it will work. And of course, after firing, it will receive the final form of the cartridge. And I'm not going to fully resize it anymore because I'm going to fire it from this uh, uh, Zauer Kiplov rifle. So there is no, no need to, to, to fully resize the cartridge case, which will, uh, which, which will lengthen the life of the cartridge case. And black powder is very gentle to the cartridge, so it probably means that this cartridge will last forever in my rifle. The first step is to open the case mouse a bit, so it will be able to accept the lead bullet and now comes the priming. And now it is time to measure the powder, which will be the same one and a half as Swiss number four powder as with the manual loading method. It worked well, so I'm going to stick with that. But this time I'm going to load it with a long funnel. This will help the powder to settle evenly in the cases. The weight of the charge is exactly 60 grains, but I'm measuring it by volume, as you can see, because it will be just as accurate. These cases were designed for nearly 5 grams of black powder, which means I will have to add another 10 grains of corn wet as a filler. The next step is an 11.1 mm cardboard wet, which will protect the base of the bullet, therefore increases accuracy. And there you go, now we are ready for the bullets. My bullet comes from a lineman mod, especially designed for the 11mm Mauser cartridge. The weight of the bullet is 23 grams or 354 grains. Now it is time for the lubing. I'm using my well proven lube recipe, which is 8 part of tallow, 2 part of beeswax, and just a little touch of synthetic engine oil. And now it is time to size the bullets. 
And although the Alexander Henry bore of my rifle is a bit smaller than the original Mauser military rifles bore, I'm still going to use the 446 caliber to size these balls because I already know that uh, this bore was in fact designed for this bullet size so I'm going to stick with that and I already know that it shoots good with that. And now it is time for the final assembly. I forgot to tell you before that the bullet is uh, made of a hardened alloy. So this is 14 parts of parts of pure lead plus one part of tin. And uh, why I especially like this Lyman bullet is it has very deep grease grooves, which means it will hold a lot of lube, which is very useful for black powder shooting. The dies are already set, so it will only give a very light cream to the cartridge. I don't think too much because the bullet is just uh, firmly pressed against the powder and the web so let's see the length of the cartridge is set exactly to the size of the chamber which means that the the bullet the the point or edge of the bullet is nearly touching the grooves and there you go we have a cartridge ready for shooting from a reformed 4590 case and now we are ready to go. Although the first time was quite complicated, but the next reloads will be much, much easier.